So, welcome to the Koopa Kingdom. This is where the game stops having worlds based more or less on specific games and starts just doing its own thing. And here we have Flying Raccoon Zone, which uh, it's kind of a weak level to start off. It's mostly based around its gimmick, which we're not going to be doing until the second part of this because there is a level. Now this is named Flying Raccoon Zone, so this is the place where you're supposed to first find the Super Leaf item. Uh, but of course I did get one earlier from a Toad House. But we're not going to be taking that path because while we can fly over the level, there is a level here and oh, whoops, oh no! Boot, no! Oh god. Curse my lack of good memory. It's taken my boot from me. Uh, but anyway, yeah, th there is a level here, and it's kind of non-specific. I mean, it's not out-and-out -out boring, but it's just kind of there, you know? I mean, to be fair, he did make a level to be skipped, so it makes sense to an extent, but still. Uh, it's kind of back and forth. It's not exactly a water level, but there's not that much platforming either. Oh yeah, and those munchers, by the way, are... I think those are munchers, right? Those are special munchers that walk back and forth. Yeah, those guys are annoying, because if you try to jump over them, they jump up. I think that's the first time we've seen them in this game, and goddammit, why do I keep forgetting that you can't swim with a boot on? You'd think I'd remember that. At least I can rescue this boot, though. I won't let you die like the other boot I killed! See? I made a little platform! I'm being clever now! That was totally on purpose. Definitely. I, I know what I'm doing. When have I ever not known what I'm doing? In any one of these videos, there is not one moment in which everything was not planned. Definitely. Uh, but yeah, I, I do want to keep the super leaf. I mean, yeah, sure, the uh, the uh, ice flower. Why didn't I remember, remember the name ice flower? It's kind of easy to remember, but uh, anyway, yeah. The ice flower is nice and all, but super leaf is much better because Toad gets a double jump. No one else gets a double jump, just Toad. I mean, Link turns into a fairy and he can fly upwards, so it's kind of helpful, but not really. Ah, well. Either way, uh, I'm not using Link no matter what, because I don't really like playing as him. He's not good for most levels. Now, now there's just a precise donut jump block that I can skip, thanks to the Super Leaf. But yeah, see what I mean? It's just kind of non-specific. But since that was a secret exit level, let's go back in and actually fly through the stage this time. This is one of the few times in which I will actually show myself going through a level to get a secret exit, because I will actually show off a different part of the level. Sigh. So, um... Yeah, in the end you're going to see my quote-unquote death count for this world, and um... This segment alone drove it up really, really high. Like, unfortunately high. Like, I probably could have beaten this game with less than 50 deaths if it weren't for this one stage. Because I wanted to get a good clean run of this, but I kept screwing up because apparently holding the A button in just the right way is very difficult. And all you get for that is a Tanuki suit, which allows you to turn into a statue. Which is kind of neat, but not, not that useful, because there's not that much else you can really use this for that you couldn't do already with just a standard leaf. So the secret exit's right there. You don't even need to, to do the flying segment to get the secret exit, so... I mean, I wouldn't say I kept failing over and over again for nothing, because again, I did want to show that off, but... Still, I, I screwed this up so much for that, for a Tanuki suit. Anyway, let's let's skip past that. Let's let's go to Go Go Goomba. So I did say that this is kind of a, a world without any specific stage theme, and that is still true. I say that's mostly true. But if there is one that this uh, world's based on, it's probably based on the original Super Mario Brothers for what will eventually become exceedingly obvious reasons. I mean, first off, this is pretty obviously Super Mario Brother blech, Brothers 1 inspired, excuse me. Uh, but there is actually another stage that's uh, even more to the point, I think. Anyway, this is a pretty good recreation of the Super Mario Brothers 1 style. I mean, I wouldn't think it's that difficult. They were kind of plain. 
they were all flat. I mean, the, the tile set itself kind of makes sure of that, because see those little grass tiles? Yeah, they can only be one layer up because they don't have sides or you can't fill in anything, so they can't really be have any sort of depth. But yeah, it's it's kind of flat. There are pipes, and oh, we get to go underground now. See, now it's a reference to the underground stages in SMB1, which are also not that bad to do either. It's kind of easy to get that sort of style, even in this engine, which, excuse me, well, I lost my incredibly valuable Tanuki suit, which really <laughs> took me a long time to get, so thanks, Piranha Plant. It was very nice of you to just destroy all that. Not even difficult work, just... The, the fruits of so many failed attempts. I guess I'll go with that. And now we have the uh, athletic stages of Super Mario Brothers, so it's all the types of stages except a water stage, I think. I don't think there are any uh, water stage references here, because, as I said before, Redigit does not seem to like water stages. I can sort of get that in a Mario game. They haven't always had the best water stages, but you know, fan-made water stages could be pretty cool if you put your mind to it. Next, uh, the Great Fish Fiasco. Ah, I know this one. So again, very SMB1 based. Uh, but, as I'm sure you know from the name, I actually kind of want this. I mean, any power-up's good, but Fire Flower would be useful because we have Bridge, and if you've played Super Mario Bros. 1, this is another type of level that was in this game, or in that game, rather. Okay, so we haven't seen them just yet, but there were the bridge stages in the original Super Mario Brothers, which could be kind of difficult. Oh, uh, before I go on, I don't know how you get that Tanuki suit. I mean, I don't actually know how to break those blocks from the underside, or if you're above them and they're underneath you. That's what I'm trying to say. But yeah, I don't actually know how to get that Tanuki suit. It doesn't look like you can get it with the Yoshi. I guess you could... No, actually, I don't think Boomerang Toad will pick up power-ups with that, so... Yeah, I'm gonna be honest, no idea how to get that power-up. Well, this this entire playthrough is ruined, I don't know how to get a thing. It's not gonna be 100%, and I've failed... I've just failed miserably, oh well. Uh, but anyway, yeah, these, these stages can actually be particularly hard in the uh, Super Mario Bros. first game. Because the fish stages... Fish, there are fish everywhere. Seriously, look at those guys. He... Thanks, Lampshade Toad. Yeah, I, I can't believe we're suddenly in an ice area. I, I, that, that's just so wacky. How strange. Anyway, I'm just going to keep dodging these flying fish with my kind of bizarre-looking ears and tail that kind of look like they were just pasted on. Well, considering just how strange it is, that there is an ice level in the middle of this non-ice-looking map. <sighs> Lampshade Toad, clearly you have all the questions that we are also asking. I, I am just as confused as you are, but I cannot voice myself nearly as well as you can, Lampshade Toad, and I'd say I was stuck in between a rock and a hard place there, but I wasn't really. I was kind of outside the rock and the hard place, and then I just ran my face into the rock. But whatever, stage is over. So, we finally get over here, which, yep, Retroville. So, we get a ton of custom uh, block swaps. In fact, most of the uh, backgrounds and enemies here are swapped for 8-bit sort of uh, sprites. That is the word I'm looking for. Uh, except for the player characters, oddly enough. They just don't seem to fit in here, but even the power-ups look like they do in... 8-bit style. Of course, I think that's actually the uh, Super Mario Bros. 3 Fire Flower in 8-bit. I'm not actually quite sure about that. Ugh, God, I just, I don't know anything, man. I'm, I'm not researching nearly enough for these, for this very casual playthrough that I'm doing. Uh, but we've got a whole mix of enemies here, so while it is retro style, it's not exactly SMB1 because we do have other enemies. Well, by other enemies, I mean there are a few Super Mario Bros. 2 enemies here and there. Actually, no, there was a Buzzy Beetle back th Wait, no, I'm pretty sure Buzzy Beetles were in Super Mario Bros. 1. Well, there goes my argument. Okay, so it's minimal, but there are a few mix of things here and there. And just like uh, two stages ago, 
we've got a mix of different kinds of Super Mario Bros. 1 stages. Now we're back into the underground area. And if I'm correct, this area actually introduces a certain type of enemy. Yep, Hammer Bros. Uh, nobody likes Hammer Bros. You wouldn't think that they were all that difficult to avoid. They don't look too difficult. And yet, they are. They jump around and throw hammers. Honestly, the worst thing you can do when fighting Hammer Bros is be nervous about fighting Hammer Bros, but... They kinda psych you out, you know? They're just hopping back and forth, and it looks really intimidating to actually fight them, and... Oh, oh, hi, how's it going? Oh, your error? Good for you, buddy. Good for you. Anyway, moving on. This is sort of an athletic stage. It kinda transitions, because we got a little water section, but then we move on to mushrooms. Spoilers. God, I can't believe I spoiled that. Uh. And... But yeah, we do have Hammer Brothers here, and I forget which path is the secret path. I think I accidentally end up going towards the secret area. Probably should have taken the pipe, because there is a bonus area there, but... It's nothing too big, it's just a bonus area. You can get coins and I think a few powers there. Yeah, see? Found the secret key by accident. But, I kind of want to do the secret exit second, because why the heck not? Well, I mean, to be fair, it doesn't really matter either way. I guess I just gave myself a key weapon here, though. That's the real reason I did this, so I can show off how a key is very, very deadly. No one should mess with a key. Oh, except I turned it into a coin. Farewell, key. You are a very good ally slash weapon. Alright, back into the level. Gonna prevent that from happening. Okay, so, here's the secret exit. Instead of going down, you fly all the way to this block so you have enough flight left to get over here. Easy enough, right? So, what does that unlock? That unlocks just a normal toad house. And what's in the toad house? I think there's Yoshi's here, right? Yeah, oh wow! Yeah, this guy actually explains what these Yoshis do. Both of these are custom Yoshis, but I'm more interested in this stuff. Specifically the Tanuki suit. Sorry, Hammer Suit, I like you, but I kind of prefer having a cheap-ass double jump. So we did skip this world last part, but we're finally going back to the last area of Frosty Frost Frostlands. Now, this is the only required level in this entire world. You do sort of have to come by here in World 2, but thanks to a secret area, you can actually bypass the uh, detour through there. Until recently. That's a fantastic spelling mistake right there. Alright, so, recent events mean that we have to fight the giant moles. Well, not really fight, they're just kind of an obstacle, and oh, whoops, we were supposed to play as Mario or Luigi. Oh well, let me just casually glide down the shaft here. No problems here. And I don't know how you're supposed to get that moon. I Maybe it's just there to taunt. Well, uh, if there were invisible blocks on that ledge, then maybe you could get it. And wow, that was a great move there. <laughs> wow, look at that mole go. That was quite the dance, Mr. Mole. That was fantastic. You can break through those blocks if you want, but I just want to get through this stage. In fact, I really want to get through this part. This is sort of a maze-ish area. Kind of. Sort of? I don't know. It's kind of mazy. But yeah, it's one of those water areas that's not really that good. I mean, it's better than other water areas. There's certainly stuff to dodge. It's not a wide open space, which, again, that's... Pretty sure I've said that's pretty much one of the, uh biggest problems with the original Super Mario Bros. water levels. It was just a lot of open space, and it was just kind of dull, because there was nothing really to do. Not much of a challenge in the water stages. Not, not as bad in Super Mario Bros. 3. I, I think their water stages were a little better, and nope, don't go down there. That is not an area you can go. That is death. Do not go into that pit. But yeah, sometimes you have to go into a pipe. Uh, it's not really a maze. It's just, sometimes you might accidentally go past the pipe you need to go to, but then you'll immediately realize where you need to go. It's not that difficult. That's why it's only maze-ish. Slight maze. This kind of reminds me of, uh, that was the earlier level. It was a World 2 level, I believe. But it was that one with, uh, 
There's a vertical section with a bun bunch of pipes. It's not quite the same because there's not as much water, but hey, you know, it's there. I guess it just reminds me of that because it's also a short vertical section. But yeah, that was the mole hole. That was the entire stage, and now we can progress to the second half of Koopa Kingdom. Just as soon as we take this pipe transition. You know, I'm pretty sure you could actually just warp from pipe to pipe on the world map by this time the uh, update rolled out, so I don't know why it has pipe transitions here. Ah, well, whatever. So, this is one of my least favorite castles, but it has one of my favorite names. The Dungeon of Inappropriate Phrases! Ooh! Uh, but it's not because of the Hammer Brothers that I dislike this castle. I swear, just because I don't like them doesn't mean that I hate the castle because of this. No, I hate it because it's very based on Super Mario Bros. 1, because there are a bunch of tricks to make you go back into the stage, or back through the stage, rather. Uh, plus a bridge building segment, which is always fun, right guys? It's always fun to just sit there and hit some blocks. Just hit some blocks over and over again. Yep, <sighs> just gonna hit some blocks. I mean, this jump is kind of tricky, but after that we're just gonna hit some more blocks. You do have to wonder why there aren't any piranha plants here. You'd think there would be. But enough thinking about that, we gotta hit more blocks. Actually, to be fair, I guess you don't really have to hit these blocks. I mean, you can easily make that jump on your own, so those aren't necessary, they're just easy. This, on the other hand, is necessary. You do have to hit each and every one of these blocks. You could probably skip one of these just because you can Mario run over a single block, and I don't think I want to take that chance just in case. I don't want to have to do this again due to some stupid error. Because I could definitely count on myself to make some dumb error at the last second. Oh, look at that! We were tricked and now I have to go back through the level because you're supposed to go through this pipe. But hey, we got a few coins for our troubles, right? Oh, thanks a lot for that game. I really want to go through the level again. Thanks a whole bunch. I think we're almost at the end, right? Oh wait, no, first more Hammer Brothers. Cursed Hammer Brothers. At least the Ice Flower is good for this stage. You know, the Ice Flower I just lost, because that Hammer Brother has skills. Very, very good skills. And I don't really want to risk jumping around, so let's just go through these pipes here. Just gonna keep pressing down until we find the correct path. What do you know? We got it pretty quickly. Isn't that nice? Here's Super Mario Bros. 1 Bowser. I'm always bad at fighting him, so we're just gonna hit the axe and he's dead. Hooray! Alright, well, Bowser's dead, so I guess that's the game beaten, right? Oh, hey, Daisy, when did you get here? Okay, well... I guess she's here with a car, so we can escape the Ko Koopa Kingdom in style. Gonna have the credits roll, and we're just gonna be in a nice car roll. Oh my goodness, there's another level. How surprising. So anyway, a bit of context for this. In the original version of this level, this is actually a Kaizo stage, uh, to use that particular term. It kind of still is here because, oh, I took the exit, but oh, there's a pit here. Oh, darn, I died. Uh, but anyway, yeah, the entire solution here is skip this exit. Now, I don't remember the exact level, but there was more level to this. And it was very much Kaizo, because it was very tedious, bad level design, where you kind of had to do a very specific thing in order to actually beat the stage. It is one of the major stage changes in this game. Uh, I don't really want to go back to the original Invasion and see what it was like, though, because first off, I don't want to play the original Invasion. Second off, it was a bad level in the first place. I don't know why they, he decided to keep it, I mean, he shortened it, so he knew it was a bad stage, and yet, he kept it in anyway. Thank thank you, Lampshade Toad, for mentioning that. It was very nice of you. I, too, question why these levels are called Pwnhammer and not something like Metroid or something like that. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, second Metroid level. And this one's kind of neat. I guess it's a bit more Metroid-y because you can find little uh, side spaces in the level and they have cool items in them. But again, it's mostly just a platforming stage, so nothing too much to worry about here. 
until we get to the secret exit that is oh boy the secret exit is fun but we're not gonna worry about that right now because once we get over here if we go to the left we actually get this custom item which is a propeller block combined with a flamethrower because why the hell not there is a normal propeller block but this one's got a flamethrower why because it can does there need to be any other reason personally I don't think so and hooray we get a tanuki suit I mean we kind of have an unlimited source of those now so it's really not a huge deal but hey we just get this tanuki suit just in case we need it got this nice tanuki pajamas I think it's a bear suit but uh, I think we're almost yep we are halfway through the stage doop de doo there was certainly nothing to the left here you kinda get punished for dying here in that you don't get this cool flamethrower if you die, unless you go back a ways through the level and manage to pick it up, but you do at least get a cannon and you will need that for this stage. Well, I guess you don't need it, but it's useful. I mean, everyone can pick it up except Link, and if they can pick it up, then why not use it? Actually, I don't think I mentioned this in the uh, previous Metroid stage, but yeah, Link is not good for Metroid stages for that very reason. Because seriously, he, he can't pick up the cannons or flamethrowers, so even if he can make it through the stage, it's less fun, so why would you choose him? Anyway, that's the normal exit. Time for secret exit fun. Okay, so the nice thing about this is they do actually give you a midpoint right before the secret path. So, if we go down through here, this isn't too bad, right? Nah, nothing too bad. Oh, we dropped our flamethrower, though. So, uh, does this look familiar to anybody who's played Metroid? If you had, it should, because we're about to fight Mother Brain. Now, of course, Mother Brain herself isn't the problem. It's all the cannons shooting at you. They are numerous and hard to avoid. Uh, basically, I think you want to spend most of your time destroying the shots with your shell just to clear this out. Because really, since Mother Brain won't attack you herself, then it's really not a problem. Just better safe than sorry, destroy as many shots as you can, and just let the shell roll until they're all destroyed so you can take another shot. Just be more careful than anything else and you should be fine. Don't worry, Mother Brain will not turn into a giant chicken thing at the end. That is not part of Super Mario Bros. X as far as I know. I mean, you never know. It could be, and it could be extremely hidden, but I, I highly doubt that somehow. But yeah, if you just let the shell roll and try not to hit Mother Brain too much, you should be good. Keyword here is should be, but hey, I, I've screwed this up before, but this is a pretty good... That was a pretty good run. Wow, I almost died at the end. Thankfully, I was able to kill her at last second. So yes, indeed, Toad has killed Mother Brain, which, oddly enough, is more canon than Metroid Prime. Less canon than Other M, though. I kind of feel like the biggest dick, but that always amuses me, that, that apparently Metroid Prime is not canon, but Other M is. I mean, I don't really like Other M, and I, I don't exactly like Metroid Prime. I don't dislike it. I'm very neutral on it. Other than that one conversation, or uh, not conversation, but the uh, log in the first game in which the space pirates attempt to replicate uh, Samus's morph ball. That always amuses me, but yeah, that for some reason I just love the fact that Metroid Prime is not canon, but Other M is. It, it fills me with glee, and I kind of feel like a huge jerk for it. But anyway, this is a its a pretty unique level, and not just because of all these weird enemy color palettes. Kind of reminds me of a Kirby stage like that, but uh, look at that. We get to pick up and carry a Hammer Brother and use him as a weapon. That is pretty great. I don't really think this is a custom item so much as just like a custom AI for Hammer Brothers, in that if you pull them out of the ground, they will just non-stop fling hammers at everything. So yeah, this stage is pretty fun. Uh, not too much platforming-wise. There's a bit of platforming, but it's it's just one of those stages where you get to destroy everything, and it's pretty cool because of that. It's kind of like the uh, cannon stages, or I guess in the previous stages uh, case, more of a flamethrower stage. 
But yeah, I, I do like this one, even though I do usually make a few dumb mistakes near the end. Like, consistent. This isn't even near the end, I just made a dumb mistake, but yeah, consistently I will make mistakes. To be fair, this is actually kind of a difficult stage overall, especially near the end. Oh, whoops. Because uh, there are a lot of enemies. Thankfully, if you lose your Hammer Brother, you're not completely screwed or anything, that would just be unfair. But, you know, you do kind of have to be careful, because you don't want to lose him in the middle of a huge plane of enemies, because that would just be trouble. So... But yeah, uh... Oh, whoops! Uh, sorry about that, Hammer Bro. Yeah, see, I, I kind of make dumb mistakes. You know, we might be destroying everything, but this isn't a complete pushover. You know, you, you do still have to give some sort of effort, especially with bombs and sniffets around. Never be close to a bomb while destroying it. That should be obvious, but I'm pretty sure I've ignored my own rule at some point. I wouldn't put it past me to stand right next to a bomb and fling a hammer at it. That just sounds like something I'd do. And no, you don't have to destroy all the enemies or anything. I just like to destroy them. So I don't know why there was that door transition there. But at least you don't use, lose your hammer brother or anything. It's not like it's a filter for that reason. Come on, be a, be a leaf. Ah, damn it. Come on, fire flower, that's completely useless. I do not need a flower at all. I just need my hammer brother. He has unlimited hammers and he's really cool. And you could actually skip a decent portion... Ah, damn. Yeah, see? Not that, not that uh, easy. But yeah, you could skip a decent portion of this stage with Luigi or Peach, I think. And maybe Mario? Possibly Link, I don't know. That Link guy, I don't think he can really jump that high. I mean, if he had a leaf coming into this, then maybe, but... Then again, Toad could make it up here if he had a leaf. So we're done with that stage. That one was pretty fun, and... We're actually at another fun stage, which... Is this game's namesake. The Invasion. So these stages are definitely fun. Right here we start out with Bowser's airships invading. Oh, they must be avenging the death of their master who is definitely dead because I definitely killed Bowser. At what point has Bowser ever come back to life in the Mario series? It's never happened. I mean, what is he, a Time Lord? Pfft, no. So yeah, this stage, you just ride on top of an airship and you fling bombs at things. Now, keep in mind, I'm pretty sure you can hurt yourself with your own bomb, so do be wary of that. Now, I don't know why they're slowing down. You'd think they'd want to speed up for the enemy ships. I mean, this isn't really doing anything but letting enemies drop onto our ship, so who's ever piloting this thing, you're not doing too good a job. Uh, the Chase Koopas are very annoying here just because they're hard to hit with a bomb, and they follow you everywhere. To be fair, Koopas that chase you in general are kind of the hardest enemies in this game, usually. Wow. So yeah, you definitely can hurt yourself with your own bomb. I confirmed it right there. You can get a free Tanuki suit, but um, don't think that just because the airship stopped means you should get off. They are going to continue eventually. And if you get off the airship and they leave without you, well, I'm pretty sure you're just forced to die because you can't actually complete this stage. Unless you manage to, like, run back to the airship and grab onto the anchor just in time. That'd be pretty cool. I don't want to risk it, so I'm going to play it safe, but hey, you could try doing it. So yeah, there's not really too much to this stage, I suppose, but again, flinging bombs at things, it's pretty rad. Now this is the point at which you actually have to hop off the airship. And is there an item here? No, there does not seem to be. Oh no, but it's Larry. How will I ever defeat him? He's pretty easy. You jump on him three times, he fires stuff at you, don't stand in front of him when he's throwing stuff at you, and oh man, that was pretty cool. I jumped on him before he even had a chance to get out of his shell. Oh, couldn't quite do it twice. But he only attacked me once, so there's that. Thank you, Mysterious Floating Orb. Very kind of you to take me out of this level. We had a castle, but this was the true end to the world. Next time on the Invasion 2, we go to the Hurtful Hotlands. Why, well, I've never been so insulted by Hotlands in my entire life.